From home sales to protecting assets each week, Bob Massey dips into his mailbag to answer your questions. And joining us right now from Las Vegas is Fox News legal analyst Bob Massey, who we lost last saw on Halloween and you had a bald yes. you had a bald wig on. Lost my hair and uh, made a little uh, correction here. It should be Walnut, California, where, in fact, you have to have a permit to wear a mask. So just wanted to uh, correct that from last week. Thank you very much, uh, Bob. All yes, right. Uh, we got a bunch of questions for you. First, mm -hmm. Carol from Washington says, my son signed over half of his home's title to his fiance. Oh, this mm -hmm. is not going to be good. Now they're mm -hmm. probably not going to get married. If he wants to sell his house, does he need her permission well everything comes with a price my friend and once you put title somebody's name on that property you basically have said you're not the owner even if she's not on the mortgage it doesn't matter the bottom line is the fact that in order to sell that house you have to get both parties consent for purposes of selling the house so yes if you list the property when you go to sell the property both people have to sign off this is going to cost some money. Love Good. costs money sometimes. So would your advice be don't don't uh, put things in your new spouse's name until after the wedding? Well, you know what, Steve, I'll tell you, this happens more often than not. Family members put kids on it. Yep. This happens in these situations. I think what you have to do, really, get legal advice to understand okay. the consequence of that. People live together. They do these things. They break up, and they use it basically as extortion to get money. Unfortunately, you're right too often. Meanwhile, Jack writes, I live in New Jersey, recently lost my job. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Jack. I'm not receiving unemployment, and my wife can't get disability. If I move to South Carolina... Can I still short sale my house in New Jersey? Sure. It doesn't matter where you move. The, big, the bottom line on short sales, and I will tell you, short sales are not as popular as they were before because there's more inventory on the market, which is a good thing, is the fact that you still have to show hardship. Now, if you move to South Carolina, Jack, and you end up buying a new home, then the lender that has, it, has the loan on New Jersey may say, well, where's the hardship? Always remember on short sales, you still have to show hardship, but I will represent to you that lenders are more, they're sort of more liberal now in granting the short sales and waiving deficiencies than, where, than they were a couple of years ago. They want to get people through the system. That's the thing. Yeah, hopefully. All right. And finally, Tammy from Tampa writes, what do I do about my condo board? There are five mm -hmm. members. Three were gone. So only two voted. What can I do to protect myself as an association member? Yeah, what happens many times, you know, when you have these association members, people are on vacation and the votes are taken and they, they, they make these stupid changes that basically a lot of people aren't happy with. First of all, you want to see if the two votes really have any kind of, you know, authority at all under the bylaws. Don't you need you a go quorum? To the yeah, you, yeah you, you do need a quorum. So as a result, when I first read this, I'm thinking, I'm not even sure that whatever they did is enforceable anyway. Go to your bylaws. Look at the bylaws. See, in fact, if this was a valid vote. If it's not, you have the right to raise that issue with the new board that comes in or the full membership of the board that's there. In addition to that, if you're not happy with the members, usually you could call special meetings. Those special meetings allow you to remove certain members of the board. And i got to tell you, Steve, anybody that's on these boards... A lot of times they, they go through a lot because they volunteer their time, but sometimes you get what I call frustrated Barney Fifes that have too much power and they make it miserable for everybody. So go to your bylaws, go to your what you call your CCNRs, see what the guidelines are, and make whatever changes you need to make. Let's just hope they don't have the one bullet in the top pocket like Barney Fife I <laughs> love the, the best, weren't they? Uh, they were. All right, uh, Bob Massey, oh, yeah. join us from Vegas. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Take care. You bet.